The question, what is self, is an interesting one. Last time I explained what is not self. If you remember, the five khandas are not self. The Lord Buddha teaches us, does this thing does not belong to me, this is not me, this is not myself. So, the body, you surely can agree with it, more or less, that this is not myself. And it doesn't belong to me, because I don't have the power to change it. You don't have the power, you know, just by thinking about it, to change it from a woman to a man, or from a man to a woman. Or to change the hairstyle, you know, to have brown hair instead of, you know, uh, blonde hair. I mean, we can do it with chemicals, but not through our own inner wishes. So it's certainly not something that belongs to us. It's, it's certainly not something that is us or is ourselves. If it would be me, you know, I could change it. <clears throat> so it is an entity that is very close to us, but it does not belong to us. So we are born in this body, we think we are the body. Just like a person would think, who is born in a car, and dies in a car, that he and the car is one and the same thing. He never gets out of the car. I mean, in America, you hardly have to get out of the car. You can sleep in the car, you can eat in the car. <laughs> <coughs> drive throughs and so on. <coughs> so this, this is one of the groups. The first group, the body. The next group is feeling. That's more difficult. Feeling, there are two kinds of feelings. Oh, I feel. you, can, you can divide it up to 128 kinds of feelings, but I divide it only up to six kinds of feelings. There's the, there's the bodily feeling and the mental feeling. The bodily feeling and the mental feeling can be divided up into three more feelings. Into an uncomfortable feeling, or in a satisfactory feeling or a neutral feeling. So you have six kinds of feelings. This you can further divide up, <coughs> but that is feeling. Feeling we experience. They are very close to us, and that's, so we think they are us. They are mine. They belong to us. But we do not realize, or most of the time we do not realize, that they arise and then they cease because of their own nature. They arise and cease and we cannot change them. If they arise and they cease and we want to keep them on, they still go away. If they arise and stay on and we don't want them, they still stay on. So they cannot be us. They cannot be mine and they cannot belong to us. Because otherwise, you should ask the question, who is the one who knows about feeling? I mean, does the feeling, does the sad feeling know it is a sad feeling? Does the happy feeling know it is a happy feeling? Does the feeling itself know it's a feeling? So this cannot be Self. It is something that is happening. It is something that we experience. So the next thing is memory. The next group is memory and association. Association, or you can say it labels. Whatever you, whatever you associate, whatever you see or whatever you hear, you've, you've put a name to it. You say chicken, or you say you say dog, or you say leaf, or you say tree, or you say house, or bed, or whatever. That is association. It's one, one part of the memory function. And the other thing is the memory that we know. The memory we have, the memory we, we bring up, and the memory that comes on its own. 
So it's the same thing with memory as it is with feeling. It just arises and ceases. I mean a memory arises. If you like it, we bring it up again. But it doesn't stay on. And the, the moment this memory comes up, if we don't like it, we can't make it go away because it came up. And we can't make it to not arise. It just arises on its own nature. How it arises and how these things cease, we will understand when we practice. When, we, when our practice becomes really deep. Then we understand how these things arise and cease. What is the cause for its arising? What's the cause for its ceasing? <clears throat> so the next thing is thought. Thought is the same thing. Most of the thoughts we have don't come up because we want to think them. They just come up. And they see is the same thing. If it's a thought we like, we think it over and over and over again until we get tired of it. Until it doesn't bring us the pleasure anymore that it used to have in the beginning. And it gets bored. So, thought cannot be us. It cannot belong to us. And it's the same question you should ask for each of the khandas. I mean, who is the one who knows that it's a thought? The thought does not know that it's a thought. The thought doesn't know... The thought does not know that, that it's a bad thought or a good thought. And the same thing is with consciousness. Consciousness is very, very difficult to experience. Consciousness is nothing else than the knowing that there is a sense input. Not yet knowing what kind of sense data came in. We might know through which of the senses, but the moment we, we have a sense contact, it will be the function of the memory to give it a name, to give it a label. And then the thing starts. So none of these five khandas are within our control. They just happen to arise and happen to cease on their own accord. Now, the question then, what is that? I mean, if you, if you really listen very carefully, then you should know the answer by now. Self is the thing that experiences all these things, that experiences the five khandhas. So feeling cannot be self. It's a knowing nature of the chitta that you could call self. But it's not a self in the sense that it has this personality, like the personality you make out is made out of the five khandhas. The form of your body. I mean, the sex is one of the personalities. You're male or female. The hairstyle is another personality. Your feelings are another personality. Your thoughts and your memories are another kind. All form up to the personality, what we call self. And when you think about you, that's what we think about in terms of the five khandhas. I mean, just, just do this experiment. Whenever you think about you, whenever there is a form, I, I thought, then think about it, what in, in, in which of these five khandhas does it belong to? And you will find, find one of the khandhas. Most of it is memory and thought or feeling. Sometimes it's a body. And that's what you call self. But it's not the self that we are, we are talking about. It's that what the Lord Buddha taught us. That is not me. That doesn't belong to me. This is not <coughs> myself. So he was pointing out that there is something beyond that. Who knows that a thought is a thought. Who knows that a feeling is a feeling. Who knows that the body is a body. Who knows that consciousness is consciousness. And the way of samadhi is getting, is, is leading us the way to know 
the true nature of our citta. The true nature of the citta is just the observer. We can call it the observer or the knowingness. That is the true nature of the citta. But the knowingness doesn't have a personality. It just knows. So when you get down, when you strip it all down, then there is no, what we call in the world, called self. There is no personality. The personality is made out of the five khandhas. And that's why it is made out of the five khandhas. That's why each person differs. Some people are, <coughs> are similar, and other people are not so similar. Or are, com- are completely opposite. I mean, whatever you think about, this is me, or that's mine, that's myself, you know, think about it. It is made out of these five khandhas. But that doesn't lead us to the knowingness of the chitta. The way of samatha, the way of going into up, in the state of apana samadhi, would lead us to the true na- nature of our chitta. To the knowingness who knows that there is a thought, who knows that there is a feeling, who knows that there is consciousness, who knows that there is memory, who knows that there is a body. Because the body doesn't know that it's a body. I mean, you can break it apart, open it up, you know, it doesn't even know that it's opened up. All what it can do is react on its own conditions. The thought doesn't know that it's a thought. And especially it doesn't know if it's a good thought or bad thought. Memory is the same thing. It doesn't know if it's a good memory or bad memory. It's a happy memory or unhappy memory. The only one who knows is is the true knowingness of our chitta, is the chitta. That knows everything. As I said, you know, uh, when, when we sit in... when we sit in a theater and watch a play, we know we are not the persons on the stage. Or when we look at a movie, we know that we are not the person, but we still can see it, we still can experience it. And we still laugh, or we still cry, and then, or whatever, depending on the play. So the knowingness is that, what what you really would call the true self. But a self without a personality, so that's a mis... I mean, it's just, it just doesn't fit. Just call it chitta. And the path of samadhi, for instance, if you, if you really invest, if you really look at it very carefully, the way we do train ourselves to get into samadhi is by observing the breath, knowing that the breath comes in, knowing that the breath goes out, knowing that the breath is deep, knowing that the breath is shallow. Knowing that the in press is longer, or the out press is longer, or the in press is shorter, or the out press is shorter. Or knowing about the Buddha, that the Buddha is fast, or that the Buddha is slow, that the Buddha is deep, or the Buddha is shallow. So, that method actually leads us to the knowingness of the chitta. To the chitta. And that's why it, it works. If we really do it, it will work, it will lead us automatically to the knowingness of the chitta who knows that the breath is short. We don't have to tell that the breath is short. We just know it. But of course there is a little voice, you know, that constantly repeats all the knowingness that is in, in, comes from the chitta. And so we assume that this is the, this is the actually, you know, the, that is the actually... <coughs> Knowingness, but it's only the reporter who reports it to everyone, you know, if he wants it or not. Or doesn't it happen? Now I'm calm. I mean, the knowingness comes before that there is calmness. So why do we have to actually put it into words or put it into thoughts? Now I'm close to the chitta. So who? I'm thinking too much. I mean, we all know it. So the 
So the, the, the meditation of samatha, the meditation of calm, is actually leading us, if we do it correctly, is, is leading us to this, knowing this. And when we go into the state of apana samadhi, we will experience it. Because then there is knowingness without objects. It's a pure knowingness. At the moment we still know. You can say it in, in other words, you can say there is an observer and the object observer. So be it, you know, be it your breath or be it the Buddha or the combination of Buddha and the breath that is going to be observed. But these methods, when practiced correctly, will lead us to the knowingness of the citta. And once there is only knowingness, everything else disappears. And you will be amazed. And then you just have to try it out. I mean, it's an amazing state of mind. I mean, as you call it in English, it's an amazing state of mind, but actually it's not an amazing state of mind, it's an amazing state of the citta. When everything disappears, once you get close, once the citta really gets calm and there are no more thoughts formed, there is still experience, and you still concentrate on the breath, or you can still concentrate on the Buddha, until, the, until you can't think the Buddha anymore. I mean, you, the, the chitta is so concentrated that it can't even think a single thought. And then you stop it. And you go to the knowingness that knows that it can't think a th- single thought. And the same thing with the breath. The moment you see that the breath stops, you go to the thing that knows that the breath stops. You just jump there. And it's just jumping like, uh, it, it is just like jumping into a well. I mean, it's a very deep well. In the beginning you still see the sky, in the end you don't see anything anymore. And in other terms it means, in Apana Samadhi, the first thing that disappears is the body, from our sense of awareness. Then the senses disappear. And then everything disappears. And all what is left is knowingness. And that, if you want, you know, if you want to call it the true self, yes, then this is the true self. The moment we come out from the Apana Samadhi, the self is <coughs> oh, <yes. coughs> Def- determined, yeah, contaminated or defiled by the Kilesa Sakha. So then you get a different notion of self. But don't call it self, you know, just call it chitta. Or just call it knowingness. I mean, confusing the terms is not, sometimes not really helpful. And this kind of chitta is the chitta of every person. It's just the same thing. The chitta of, of you sitting there and the chitta, the true chitta of me sitting there is just the same thing. I mean, it experienced, in, in different conditions, of course, it experienced different things. Just like, think about the ocean. I mean, the ocean, at the ocean at, that, uh, <coughs> at California is different at, at, than the ocean, or experienced different things than the ocean, you know, like in Brazil. But it's still the same water. So the essence is the same. The experience is different because under different conditions. And that's what we actually revert back to. When we get enlightened, we revert back to the true chitta. And the conditioning is gone. And then you just, then you just become the ocean. You're not just coming, becoming uh, south, south California or, or Brazil or Peru or whatever, or Chile, you know, whatever lies at the ocean. That spot on the ocean or some spot, you know, some people are just like the spot in the middle of the ocean. I mean, some people experience rain and other people, you know, experience sun. It's a bit of different experience, but it's just the water. It's just the surface of the water.
wherever the surface is. That's what it experiences. Because on the conditioning, on the wind. I mean, we always believe we, be, we are the surface. Don't we? Because things happening on the surface. But deep down, you know, t- t- ten miles down, you know, down into the ocean, there's nothing. It's always the same. Even if a strong wind comes, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, perturbe, you know, the, 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 the water down, down there. So what is what we assume is self is that what we experience or what we see or what, what is all, in other words called the, the 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 surface of the ocean. I mean to understand this truly is getting rid of some of the fatter. To really understand this this what what we are constantly up to. It's just the Playing of the light, you know, you always, uh, uh, I assume, you, you looked at light, you know, that, that is uh, reflected in, in a lake. Maybe if it's a perfect reflection or if wind comes up, you know, what happens? So that is what we assume that we are. Whatever happens, you know, if there's a wind coming, you know, the, the surface is not, not smooth anymore. If rain comes, you know, the surface will be divided. If the sun is coming out, you know, so some of the surface will go up and it becomes smooth. And that is the same thing, you know, when our body changes, when we feel something different. When our feeling changes, you know, we feel something different. I mean, we cannot be the same person, can we? Just a moment ago we were sad and now we are happy. I mean, am I happy or am I sad, you know? I mean, we live in a world of contradiction. Yesterday I was young, today I'm old. Yeah, am I old or am I young? What am I? Yesterday I thought like this. Yeah? Yesterday I was a communist and today I'm a capitalist. What am I now? <laughs> I mean, just see, see of your, how the thoughts change through your life. How your memories are changing through your life. How feelings are changing. There cannot be, you know. It's just like, you know, what, when, when you watch an ocean or when you, when you go to, to, uh, <clears throat> to a beach. I mean, just watch the ocean, you know, it changes constantly. I mean, sometimes it stays cool for, for a few days. And then some rain comes and then some wind comes. So we associate that, that we are the waves or we are the wind or we are the rain or we are the sun. And some things we like and some things we don't like. I mean, when the rain comes, we want the sun. When the sun comes, you know, we want some cool wind because it's too hot. When too much wind is coming, we wish, you know, that the wind stops. Because it's getting too cold. We constantly wish it to be otherwise. We wish it to be otherwise. And that is exactly what causes dukkha. If we could just could stay calm, observe whatever is appearing, observe whatever is disappearing, arising and ceasing, and stay with it calm, with equanimity, whatever arises, arises, huh? We say, you know, what you throw into the air must come down. Okay. So it has to come down. You have to grow old. You have to die. Our feelings are changing. So what we are attached, and that's where the problem is, we are attached to the surface of the water. I mean, all what we do in practice, you know, is going back, you know, to the origin. I mean, where things don't change. And that is in the state of Apana Samadhi. That's why it's also called deep state of Samadhi. We go deep, deep down. We, we don't see the surface anymore, so we don't even know what is happening upon the surface. And we are not bothered. I mean, even the state of uh, Upachara or Access Samadhi, you know, leads us to a state where we still see what is happening on the surface, but we, we just don't care. We're just equanimous. We just experience the thing. Because we don't have a thought of like and dislike about it anymore. 
उपचार समाधि इस इट्स वन ऑफ द स्टेट्स ऑफ समाधि एंड इच स्टेट ऑफ समाधि इज वेर द किलेस हस और वेर ए वीचर डस नॉट हैव एनी पावर ऑफ वास दैट्स वाई यू कैन कॉल दैट ए सेफ हेवन I mean when we when when our ship is sailing in high tides or our ship is sailing in a sailing in a storm in the moment we reach a harbor I mean we feel safe we are not thrown up and thrown down anymore and that is the same thing for upachara samadhi or apana samadhi we can see we can watch you know upachara samadhi is a safe haven because we still can watch you know the <coughs> the storm going on outside but we are not affected by it anymore there's no likes and dislikes about it coming up anymore i sometimes call it you know you know going in the middle in the middle of a storm into a into a glass house i mean the moment you open the glass house and get in i mean whatever happens out there you're not afraid of it but you still know And that is the state of upachara samadhi. It's a state of without worries, without fear. There is no fear, because thoughts have to <coughs> have vanished for the time being. The first thought brings us out again. Oh, that was nice. I want it again. So then we know we are. <laughs> but some some people i mean it often happens eh? i mean they open the door and they smell the, the fresh and cool and peaceful air or the happy air you know whatever you know, whatever the condition is they open the door and they they close the door in front of them and then they open it again they never get in and as a sign when when you come out of this kind of meditation I mean, you feel depleted. So you were happy. You feel depleted. So you were calm. You feel depleted in energy. I mean, the moment you open the door and close it behind your back, I mean, once you come out, you feel rested. That's the difference. So people assume that they they went into samadhi once they only open the door and close it and open and close it, and they wonder why why they are so depleted, why they have no energy. because they actually never enter once you enter you enter and then the, for the time being you will stay there for the time being i mean if you p- didn't practice it very long enough you you stay only maybe for 5 or 10 minutes after you practice it for a long time you you, you might stay there for an hour or two hours it's the same thing with apana samadhi i mean the more often we practice the longer we can stay there so whatever so you be, you should be <clears throat> when you really want when you really want to cut down on dukkha you really should understand your notion of self what you call me what you call i what you call self and then look at it very carefully if you cannot place it into one of these containers of the five kanda into one of these five groups whatever you call i and mine and it belongs into one of these five groups cannot be you or just remember one thing the one who knows that there is a thought is what you call the true chitta and that's what we want to revert to that's where we want to get to and that's where this method is going to lead us the method of samadhi is going to lead us to this state of knowing and we use the faculty of knowing to get there i mean it's pretty obvious we know that the breath comes in and we know that the breath. that's why we have to be so careful about knowing not just doing but doing it but also knowing it. because we want to we, we want to come or we want to jump 
to the knowingness of the chitta. And knowing everything in detail, and the more detail we know, the better it is. That doesn't mean that we have to repeat it in our mind what we know. That's not, that's not helpful. This is just like I said, this reporter who constantly reports what is happening, how our practice is gone. That, that is not helpful. I mean, we don't have to broadcast it on the radio, what we experience right now, but most of us do. do it. Don't we? <clears throat> At least I did it. Until I got fed up with it. So whenever you think in the form of I or my or myself, then you can do the exercise and put it, if it fits into one of the khandhas, and put it there. I mean, sometimes you, you might not know where to put it. Because it's a build-up emotion, or it's a build-up, or it's a mix of the five kinds. It's a symbol. I mean, for instance, doubt. Where does doubt come from? It comes from thought. So it's a thought. So it falls in the category of thought. thought. Fear, where it comes from? I mean, it can be a feeling, then it falls into a feeling. It can be, but most probably it is caused by a thought. So, fear is a combination of, of feeling and thought, or maybe even memory. Sati, awareness of what is going on, is the thing that gets us to knowing. Is the things who shows us, that shows us what is going on, that shows us how an emotion, for instance, Things like hate. I mean, you see somebody you instantly, you know, you feel instantly avert. I mean, it shows you how this arises. If you really spot on the spot, eh, you see a you see a memory coming up. You see some person, you know, you 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 get the name and you get the label, and you and there is a feeling coming up, and then there is a thought coming up that increases the feeling, and the memory comes up. You know, the first situation where you met him, and then the feeling comes. You know, the feeling increases, and then the thought comes up, and then you remember second situation, and then you remember, and that happens within a second. Oops. And there's hate. I mean, for some people it's so hateful that they see somebody and they want to kick him. They don't even see how it arises. I mean, it's a combination. And most of the things that we, are <clears throat> that we experience is a combination of three or four khandhas, or five khandhas. Now, isn't that amazing? This whole world, you know, we can put it back to its basic building plan. I mean, it's hard to believe, isn't it? That this whole universe, you know, is just a combination of these five candles. I mean, just think about, you know, what a, what a cook can do with five ingredients. If you just, you know, just mix them differently each time. Each time we have a different taste. Oh, now look at something, you know, our technology produces, like the computer. I mean, what can, you do, what can we do with a computer? We can play games, we can watch video, we can listen to music, we can type, or we can design. But when, when we look down, you know, what is happening at the basis of the computer, there's just a combination of two elements. Zero and what? Wow. And that gets us all the things that we enjoy with this computer. And some people get so addicted that they, they can't even stop it. And this is just a combination of two elements. Now imagine five elements combined together. What they can do. They create anything that, you know, we, we can't even imagine. 
It's beyond imagination. But if we bring it down to the basic building blocks, I mean, we see what is going on and we see how it combines us. We see how the avalanche the, you know, that hits us, be it, you know, be it uh, the avalanche that destroys us or be it the avalanche that, you know, that um, makes us greedy, is created. It is created by the first stone that drops down the hill. And this stone, you know, gathers snow. And the more it rolls, you know, the bigger it becomes, isn't it? You know that. And the same thing is happening in here. The moment we stop, we see something is going on and we stop it. For instance, like by saying Buddha, you know, we see if fear is coming up and we stop it and saying Buddha, then it will vanish. I mean, if we, if we stop Buddha, you know, I might come back because, you know, because the, the, the thoughts and the feelings are there. But if we say Buddha, 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 we stop one of the important things of this process. That is thought. So when this process is stopped, the, also the feeling with, that comes with this process is stopped. It will change. When we do Buddha for a long time, you know, it will change to a calm feeling. If you say, just say, Buddha, 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 and then fear is coming up again, you know, it is only for a short part. I mean, it is something, you have to understand, it's not you. You're observing these things, and you try to can take control over these things. That's what we have to learn to do, to take control over these things. When we see an avalanche is coming, we stop it. No matter what kind of avalanche. Is it greed or is it hate? We just stop it. But of course, if you don't have enough awareness, if you don't have enough sati, and we might not be able to stop it so soon. And especially if we like it, we won't, don't want to stop it. That's a problem. I mean, that is why our first part of investigation goes into the... Unpleasant feelings. It doesn't go into the pleasant feelings because otherwise we wouldn't find a way out. So we want to understand this mechanism with unpleasant feelings. It's much more helpful. And it's much easier. Because these are the feelings we don't like. These are the feelings that, that causes us suffering or that causes us pain or that causes us discomfort. Or just disease or just restlessness. So, we start to investigate these things. And if they don't come, we bring them up. We bring them up either by memories of unpleasant things, or the easiest way to bring them up, you know, just sticking in our body. Looking at the food that we ate this morning. Bring it up, you know, putting in our hand, looking at it very carefully, smelling it. It's still good food, you know, the body is, has not processed it yet. So for the body, it's perfectly fine. But for us, it's not fine. We rather eat new food, fresh food. I mean, even if it's, if it's very delicious food. Just think about it, you know, just, just put it into your mouth. You don't even chew it up and you spit it out. I mean, there's, you're very unlikely to eat it again. Only if you're really hungry and there's nothing else to eat. I mean, just getting into contact with our body makes everything dirty. And that's why we use the body. Because it brings up so, a lot of unpleasant feelings. Most of the things that we do, you know, are unpleasant to the body. We don't notice it yet, yeah. But in, in, in time being, the more we investigate, the more we notice. But this investigation of the body is not easy. I mean, what, what is the problem with this investigation is avicca. It does not want to see, it does not want to do it. 
And every one of us has this difficulty to get into this investigation. Once this investigation is going, it's fine. I mean, it needs a momentum. But the momentum it takes, you know, it's a long time. Isn't it, Ken? Until you really get some results. I mean, for me, it uh, was continuous practice for nine months. Until I actually, you know, I actually got, you know, an inkling of what it is. I just uh, came in, coming from the West, not knowing about anything about body investigation. You know, I came here, you know, completely. I mean, a, I mean, a freshman. Nothing, knowing, not knowing anything about anything. So I had to start from the scratch. And it took me nine months until I could, you know, I, I get an inkling what, what it means, you know, to do body con- contemplation. What it means to bring up these unpleasant feelings. And being able to stay with these unpleasant feelings and see how they mix up. I mean, that is the important thing in, in about investigation, is, is the understanding of how the five khandas are mixed up to produce that what we think we are. But the first stage in investigation is to put ourselves, you know, as an objective, as an observer of the process, not being the process. Today I feel down. Today I feel tired. You know, it does not help. The moment I feel tired, you know, all what I can do is sleep. When I say there is tiredness, then I can observe what actually is tiredness. What actually is restlessness. What actually is doubt. I mean, if I say I'm in doubt, you know, I have no, you know, I have no handle on it. The moment I separate it and said, this is not me, that is not mine, that doesn't belong to me. And that, I was doing that a lot in my, in my early stages of practice. Just, you know, just to get, I mean, get the oppressive feeling of this feeling or of this memory or of thought, you know, just a little, a stay so that I could look at it, you know, what is that, yeah? What is that what what oppresses me, or suppresses me, or depresses me? Ah, okay, tiredness. Ah, okay. What is tiredness? Ah, Let's feel it, let's see it, let's experience it. See if it arises and ceases. eh? And the moment you are with tiredness, or you are with pain, it doesn't matter what you are with. You will see it, it arises and ceases. It just has a nature on its own. I mean, you don't even have to bother about it. And you see, come and go, and just like passing by, you know. We never bother about, most of the time, we don't bother about the clouds that pass by in the sky. I mean, we see them passing by, passing by, passing by. Huh? Maybe they are thick, maybe they are thin, maybe they are dark, maybe they are light. I mean, what does it matter? What does it have an effect on us? Huh? Nothing. But for some people, it does have an effect. Because now they want the sun, you know, and the cloud is hiding the sun, huh? That how affects everything affects us, with, like, with our likes and dislikes. So get a grip on it. Understand what is the chitta, or what is the knowingness. By going, the <coughs> by going or taking the path of knowingness of the object to revert to the knowingness of the chitta. That means breathing in and breathing out, or doing the Buddha. That will lead us automatically, it has to lead us to the knowing. And you will be amazed. It is, I mean, you have never experienced it, because it's not something that you can experience in this world. I mean, all what you can experience in this world is the things that are catches on the surface of the water. That's what you see. And that's what you experience. So go deep down. Go to the knowingness that, that helps you. Know of the Buddha that comes in. Know of the Buddha in the next Buddha. Know of the Buddha that it's fast or that it's slow or that it's deep or that it's shallow. 
What's the quality? In other words, what's the quality of the Buddha? Once you have installed the Buddha into the memory so that it comes automatically, observe the quality of the Buddha. It's just like once you are, once you are fine with the breath, observe the quality of the breath. If it's deep, if it's shallow, if it's long, if it's short, if it's, you know. And don't worry about if it's, if it's fast or if it's slow. Don't worry about if the Buddha is fast or slow. It's not an indication. You just want to know. Just want to know. I mean, if it comes in, it comes out. You just want to know. And that automatically will lead us to the knowing. There's no other way. We cannot go wrong when we're doing this correctly. But to understand it might be helpful. That's why I explained it to you. And also, to understand, you know, the things that are self, when we do the investigation, and it's not easy, first to put the things, you know, in front of our eyes. Okay, there is sadness, or there is depression, or there is this kind of feeling, or there is love, or there is greed, or there is hate, you know, whatever. Whatever you, whatever you think you feel at the moment, just say, there is. Or if you can't say there is, you know, this, then just say, this, this is not me, that doesn't belong to me, this is not mine, you know, just in the beginning maybe just pray for it. By repeating this. Until you see it, you know, until you see it becoming distant. And then you can observe it. What's that? And then you wonder how much it affects you the, more, the closer it is to your breast. I mean, it's just like seeing the avalanche, you know, just five meters, or then touching your heart. I mean, it's very different. So what, all what we do is, you know, this big snowball, you know, we push it back and push it back and push it back until we can observe it. When it touch, touches, or touches our breast, you know, we feel we can't do a thing. Isn't it? It's the same thing. You know, it's for everything. It holds for everything. If it's fear, if it's doubt, if it's greed, if it's hate. The moment it catches us, the moment the avalanche is, you know, reaching our breath, you know, we feel we can't do anything except for giving in to hate, letting the hate out, or giving in to greed, letting out the greed, or giving in to doubt, or giving in to fear. So the first thing is, you know, put it at a distance. So that the knowingness actually can observe it and understand it. Ah, okay. And then, you know, this is not me. I mean, it's just passing by. I mean, just take a step aside, you know, and it passes by. And you see it pass by. Oh, oh. And it doesn't hit you. The moment you say, I, it hits you. It is just like, you're like, come on, come on, you know, come on, hit me, hit me, hit me. You know, we are all masochists, you know, we like to be hit. I mean, bring down, take, you know, take whatever it helps you to understand what is going on. Take the example, if it helps you, you know, take the example of the computer, what you can do with a computer. And what is actually going on in the computer? I mean, if somebody, if there were, would be a wizard, you know, who could turn your screen into zero and ones, I mean, you immediately, whatever you did and whatever you enjoyed doing at the computer, I mean, you watch the zeros and one going on your screen, you know, for, for half a minute, and then you turn off the computer. But if there's a movie going on, you still watch it. But the moment you see what is really going on, I mean, what the heck, you know? If it's now 10,000 zeros and, and 11,000 ones, or, you know, 12,000 ones and, and just five zeros, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just bored. But m- the moment you see images and you hear sound, you know, you're fascinated. So bring down everything. Especially what you call yourself, bring it down, you know, and, and fit it into one of these kandas, one in, into one of these groups.
and see how that how these groups, you know, it is just like you know, just like these five balls, you know, these metal balls, you know, sitting on a string. You hit one, and and all of the other the swings with it. Fascinating. I mean, you can watch it for hours, you know, it's fascinating. Look, this one hits this, and this one hits that, and this one hits that. But it's actually a circle, you know, they, they, they go, you know, they go all, all ways. I mean, feeling hits memory, or feeling hits thought, or feeling hits the body, or body hits the feeling. I mean, it all can hit, you know, all, all can intermingle, freely. Fascinating. What comes out is this universe. Let me see. <coughs> hmm? So I hope this explains the question of what is self. Huh?